The Manther is a monophonic tabletop synthesizer from Maleco Heavy Industries. It features an analog signal path, onboard keyboard, a digital delay, and a very capable sequencer. At the heart of the Manther are the CEM3340 and the SSM2044 IC chips, which can be found in legendary synths like the Memory Moog, Oberheim's OB8, OBXA, OBSX, Roland's SH202, the Jupiter 6, early models of the Roland MKS80, Prophet 5 Rev 3, Prophet 10, 600, T8, and Pro 1, the Emu Drumulator, SP12, 1200, and the Emulator 1, as well as the Korg Monopoly, Poly 6, and the Trident, to name only a few. However, the Manther is undoubtedly inspired by the Techno and Acid House classic, the SH-101, to which it bears a striking resemblance and similar sound qualities. This video provides a basic overview of the Manther by first touring its interface and menu, then working through the foundational concepts and workflows of creating and saving sequences and songs. If you're looking for something specific, check the description below for a linked table of contents. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave any questions or comments you may have below. Inputs and Outputs On the back of the Manther, you'll find its two most essential jacks, the power and the two main outputs. One for 3.5mm headphones and another line level quarter inch output. The volume knob controls both of these output levels. Also located on the back are the MIDI inputs and outputs, which currently only support note and clock messages, but Manther's manual states that additional MIDI capabilities are planned for future firmware updates. Along the top edge are 13 3.5mm jacks for integrating your Manther with your rack systems. Working from left to right, we have the LFO output, a 1V per octave input for the VCO, CV and gate outputs for the built-in sequencer, pre-VCA outputs for the square, saw, and triangle oscillators, clock inputs and outputs, a unity level input for external audio sources, a CV input for modulating the VCF's cutoff frequency, and last but not least, a CV input for the VCA and a gate input for triggering the included ADSR envelope. Display and Menu the blue OLED display is probably the first aspect of the Manther that will catch your eye. The home screen gives you a bird's eye view of your Manther, complete with an oscilloscope of your Manther's final audio output. Along the left hand side you'll see the currently loaded bank and preset number. The current beats per minute of your Manther's sequencer, which can be set by twisting the tempo knob, the LFO rate, and the delay time. Across the bottom is a bar graph that displays the current values of the 20 control sliders. Along the right edge of the oscilloscope, another bar will appear to visualize the internal envelope generator's movement. Finally, a bar along the left edge of the oscilloscope visualizes your Manther's LFO. The OLED display is also where you will find your Manther's menu system for adjusting a variety of things. Pushing the menu knob takes you further into the menu system. Once you've navigated to a specific setting, pressing the menu knob again will select that setting and the value can be set by twisting the menu knob. To adjust another option, tap the tempo slash back knob, then use the menu knob to navigate to, select, and set the value of the desired option. To return to the home screen or navigate to a different sub page, tap the tempo slash back knob until you've returned to the proper screen. We'll cover each of your Manther's menu options while looking at their related sections and controls. Controls. The Manther keeps menu diving at a minimum by having a dedicated slider, knob, switch, or button for almost every feature. The controls are organized into related groups. Before we discuss each of the Manther's controls, there are two things you should first understand that will probably spare you from thinking that your Manther is malfunctioning. They are, what is morph, and how to identify and clear parameter automations. The morph dial controls the amount of slew or smoothing applied to any parameter changes, whether they are performed or automated. With the morph dial turned completely counterclockwise, adjustments occur instantaneously. Turning the morph dial clockwise, parameter adjustments become smoother.
In addition to Morph, the ability to automate almost all the Mather's controls via the built-in sequencer can cause some confusion while trying to learn your way around. Currently, once a parameter has been automated, it will no longer respond to physical movements of its control. The slider's LED illuminates to show when the sequencer is automating it. However, there is no indicator LED for automatable parameters which are controlled by knobs. If the delay time is being automated, you will be able to see each step's delay time in the display. For glide and the delay amount in regen, you will simply have to listen to identify when automations are controlling those parameters. Later in this video, we'll look at how to create automations. For now, knowing how to delete them will help you get control of your Manther. To delete a specific parameter's automation, hold the clear button and wiggle the control of that parameter. Alternatively, to clear all recorded automations, hold clear and press record. One final option is to return your Manther to its default settings by holding shift and pressing clear. Just remember that the physical sliders are not motorized, so you'll have to always reference the bar graph in the OLED display to see the slider's current values. With the morph knob turned entirely counterclockwise and the Manther returned to a default state, we can now begin to explore each of the controls. VCA. The voltage controlled amplifier, or VCA, has two controls. The level slider sets your Manther's resting volume. With the slider all the way down, the Manther must be triggered to produce a sound, either by the onboard keyboard the sequencer, or an external MIDI source. Raising the level slider increases the VCA's positive offset voltage. Once all the way to the top, the influence of the internal envelope generator is no longer audible on the Manther's output level. The VCA's modulation source can be toggled using this switch. In the up position, the VCA is modulated by the Manther's ADSR envelope generator. In the down position, a gate signal drives the VCA. Again, directly above the VCA is a 3.5 mm CV input for controlling the VCA with some external Eurorack source. The envelope generator. The Manther has one ADSR envelope generator, and each of its four stages is set using the four dedicated sliders. The A, D, and R, or attack, decay, and release stages, are all specified in time. For shorter, more percussive sounds, move the sliders closer to the bottom. For longer, more sweeping envelopes, move the sliders closer to the top. But as you do, be aware that more lengthy envelopes require slower tempos and longer note events for all the stages of the envelope to be fully achieved. The S where the sustain stage of the envelope sets the level that will be held after the attack and decay stages have finished but before the note has been released. The Manther's envelope generator can be triggered by the onboard keyboard, the sequencer, an external MIDI source, or by an external CV source that has been patched into the 3.5mm gate input. On Maleka's website, they indicate that somewhere in the menu, the envelope generator can be set to either linear or exponential, but it appears that this feature has not yet been implemented. Hopefully, they'll get around to it soon. 
the source mixer. Five of the source mixer's six sliders control the levels of your Manther's five different sound sources. Square, saw, triangle, noise, and a sub oscillator. The pulse width of the square wave can be manually controlled by setting the VCO's smaller switch to the middle position labeled man for manual, followed by adjusting the pulse width or PW slider. The square wave's pulse width can also be modulated by either Mather's LFO or envelope by setting the switch to either its top or bottom position. When using either the LFO or the envelope to modulate the pulse width, the PW slider controls the amount of modulation applied. By default, the slider labeled Tri Shape controls a wave shaper that distorts the output of the triangle oscillator. but with a little menu diving, the wave shaper can be inserted further down the signal path and mangle everything as it comes out of the filter. While we're looking at the mixer menu page, you'll see that this is also where the sub oscillators wave shape, semitone, and scent transpositions are set. An external audio source can also be patched in via the 3.5mm external input jack, but your Manther does not include any internal means of controlling the level of this external signal. The VCO We've already seen what two of the five VCO controls do. The remaining switch, slider, and knob set the octave range of the VCO
and the depth of frequency modulation applied to the VCO from the selected modulation source. And the glide time between notes. The glide time has a maximum range of around one second. In addition to being driven by the onboard keyboard, sequencer, or external MIDI source, the VCO can also be controlled by an external CV source patched into its 3.5mm CV input jack. The VCO will track this external CV at 1 volt per octave. VCF. The VCF's controls are organized into two parts, direct controls and modulation sources. The VCF's cutoff frequency is controlled via the Freak slider. And the amount of resonance by the Res slider. This crunchy 24 dB low pass filter can definitely self oscillate. Moving over to the VCF's three modulation sources, we begin with the envelope, which can have either a positive or negative influence on the cutoff frequency, as set by this switch. The envelope will positively modulate the cutoff when the switch is in its up position, and negatively when in the down position. The VCF's cutoff can also be modulated by the LFO. And last but not least, key. For those of you unfamiliar with key, this allows you to modulate the filter's cutoff frequency by your Mather's currently played note or key. This can be helpful in sequences that cover a large register. Without any key tracking, higher notes may become duller or even inaudible as they near or exceed the VCF's cutoff frequency. Increasing the amount of key influence, the cutoff frequency will begin to move relative to the sequence, adjusting up for higher notes and moving down for lower. One final VCF modulation source can be patched into the 3.5mm CV input jack.
the LFO. The LFO can be either free running or synchronized to your Manther's clock source. When the LFO is synchronized, the LFO sync button will illuminate and the OLED display will show the LFO's current rate and musical values, ranging from four measures to one sixteenth note. Pressing the LFO sync button again, the LFO rate is now displayed as free, and the LFO's rate can be adjusted from around 0.15 Hz to 15 Hz, or just below audio rate. The two switches above the LFO sync button determine the LFO's wave shape. When the left switch is in its top position, use the right switch to select either a saw up or saw down wave shape. The LFO can also be set to a sine or square wave. Or random stepped values. The LFO's delay slider controls how long it takes for the LFO to reach maximum strength from the moment a new note is triggered. At the bottom, the LFO almost instantaneously reaches its maximum. At the top, the LFO ramps up over about three seconds. The LFO has two additional options that can be configured in the LFO's menu page. The LFO phase adjusts where within the LFO selected wave shape will begin. The LFO can also be re-triggered to the set phase position with every new note by enabling key sync. The digital delay. Tapping into the end of your Manther's analog signal path is a digital delay. Using the delay's menu page, the range of delay time can be set to either 30 milliseconds to 600 milliseconds or approximately 5 milliseconds to 30 milliseconds. This smaller delay time makes CAR Plus strong synthesis techniques possible with your Manther. Delay sync is activated, the menu option is ignored, and the delay times are now synchronized to your Manther's clock source.
In the delays menu page, the amount that the LFO modulates the delay time can also be set. At zero, the LFO will have no influence. At 100, the delay time will be modulated significantly by the LFO. The output control of the delay is controlled by the amount knob. And the feedback or regeneration of the sound passed into the delay unit is controlled via the regen knob. All three of the delay's control knobs can be automated with your Manther's sequencer. The built-in keyboard. Your Manther includes a basic, one-octave keyboard that can be used for performance or for programming the sequencer. The octave of the keyboard can be shifted up or down by five octaves using the two transpose buttons. The further up or down from the middle octave you shift the keyboard, the faster the corresponding transpose button will flash. The sequencer. Your Manther's internal sequencer can be up to 64 steps long and is displayed and edited across four pages of 16 steps each. You can navigate the four pages of the sequence using these four buttons. The currently selected page of the sequence will flash and the page which is currently playing will remain illuminated. The length of the sequence can be set using one of two methods. Using either method to shorten a longer sequence will yield the same results but potentially very different results when expanding shorter sequences. So before we move forward to actually creating a sequence, let's look at these two methods and how they differ. The first method is found by navigating to the sequence page of your Manther's menu system. Here, you'll find the basic settings of your sequence. The first four settings are stored per sequence. Length, direction, either forward, reverse, pendulum, or random, clock division 1 through 8, and clock multiplication one through eight. The final setting is global. It determines when recalling a saved sequence will occur if a sequence is already running. If set to now, the new sequence will be recalled on the next step. If set to bar, the new sequence will not be recalled until the current sequence is completed. Adjusting a sequence's length using the sequence menu option behaves as you would probably expect. Taking this simple 8-step sequence as an example, if I shorten it to only 4 steps, you can hear the original 4 steps repeated. If I then expand the sequence to be 16 steps long, any information already stored on steps 9 through 16 will now be performed by your Manther. The other method for adjusting a sequence's length is to hold one of the four sequence page buttons and select which step will be the last step of the current sequence. While holding page 1, a sequence's length can be set anywhere from 1 to 16 steps long. Page 2, 17 to 32, page 3, 33 to 48, and page 4, 49 to 64 steps. However, when extending the sequence, you may notice that this method does more than just set the length. 
In order to make sense of what happens, let's start with this simple four-step sequence. Notice that there are currently no active steps beyond the fourth step. Now, if I want to make this sequence five steps long, I'll hold the page one button and press the fifth step. You can now hear that the sequence is five steps long and the same note occurs on both step one and step five. I'll quickly shorten the sequence to four steps again by repeating the same process. Hold page one and press the button for the last desired step. The sequence is now back to its original four steps. I'll now make the sequence seven steps long. This time we hear the original four steps plus the first, second, and third steps repeated or copied onto steps five, six, and seven. Again, I'll return the sequence to four steps, and this time I'll make the sequence 32 steps long by holding the page two button and pressing the 16th, or in this case, the button that corresponds to the 32nd step of the new sequence. This time, you'll hear that the first four steps have been copied seven times to steps five through eight, 9 through 12, 13 through 16, and so on. This method of setting a sequence's length differs from using the sequence menu page in that it also copies from the beginning of the sequence to fill in the new steps. In the second example, we extended the sequence by three steps, so the first three steps of the sequence were copied to the three new steps. In the last example, we extended a four-step sequence to 32 steps, so we copied the first four steps seven times over to fill in the 28 new steps. Let's do one final example. Here I have a sequence that is eight steps long, but only the first, seventh, and eighth steps hold events. If I hold page four's button and press the button that currently corresponds to the 64th step, the eight step sequence will now fill in all 64 steps of the new sequence. As you are hopefully starting to see, this method for setting a sequence's length can also be a very useful compositional tool. I'd suggest that once you've watched and understood the rest of this video, that you review this section again and discover for yourself how it works and its creative possibilities. Now let's actually create a sequence. Creating a sequence can be done one of two ways. Assign a note to a step by first holding the desired step, then press the note on the keyboard you want the step to play. Or you can perform a sequence by enabling the chord mode, pressing the start button, and using the keyboard to play in the sequence. Additional features of your sequence can be edited by holding the shift button and pressing any of the first six buttons. Hold shift and press the first button to set the probability of a step occurring. You'll now notice that the display shows the 16 currently visible steps of your sequence and the likelihood that each step will occur. To change a step's probability, turn the menu knob to the desired value, then press the step you want to assign that probability value to. If your sequence is longer than 16 steps, you can still use the sequence navigation buttons to move through your sequence. Once you're done editing the probabilities of your sequence, tap the shift button again to exit. Repeat sets a step's rhythmic subdivisions, which can be anywhere from one to four repeats. Delay sets the amount of time a step is delayed. Zero equals no delay. 50 equals half of the step's total duration. And 100 delays a step until the beginning of the next step.
gate sets the length that each step will be held for. Closer to zero makes the step shorter or more staccato. Closer to 100 makes the step longer or more legato. Be careful though, if you make the steps gate too long, it may mask the next step. Accent sets the relative volume of each step. Zero essentially turns a step off, or 100 is as loud as a step can be. shift function allows you to copy any information a step may hold to any other step. You'll notice that once in copy mode, the screen shows copy step from and to. First press the step you want to copy, then press the step you want to copy that step to. You can continue to copy as many steps as you'd like. Once you're done, just press the shift button again to exit the copy mode. At the top of your Manthers menu system, you'll find a page called Record that has only one option, Update, which can be set to All or Note. This option sets how automations will be recorded and played back. When set to All, anytime you record a parameter's automation, the values will be recorded for every step, even if the step is not active. If set to Note, the automations will only be recorded and played on active steps. Listen to this sequence as an example. When update is set to note, you can hear that the filter's cutoff frequency remains the same over the inactive steps. If I switch update to all, you'll hear that the filter's cutoff is now constantly changing even during the inactive steps of the sequence. Automations can be either recorded per step by holding the desired step and adjusting all the parameters to taste, or you can hold the record button to record a parameter's automation over multiple steps of your sequence. As a reminder, you can delete a specific parameter's automations by holding the clear button and wiggling a parameter. Alternatively, to clear all recorded automations, hold clear and press record. All the sliders, glide, and the delay time, amount, and regen knobs can be automated. Unfortunately, none of the switches or menu options can be automated. Saving and recalling. Your Manther can store four banks of 16 presets each. A preset will include all the synth engine settings in your complete sequence. To save a preset, hold save and select the bank and slot you want to save your preset to. Follow a similar process to recall a preset. Hold recall, then select the bank and slot you want to recall. 
Your Manther will remain within the last selected bank once you have navigated to it either by saving or recalling a sequence to that bank, making it unnecessary to re-navigate to the bank every time you want to save or recall one of its presets. Don't forget that the last option on your Manther's sequencer menu page sets when a preset will be recalled, either instantly or once the current sequence restarts. Song Mode Your Manther can organize and play back multiple sequences as complete songs. Creating a song is fairly simple. Hold the song button, then use the four page buttons to navigate your four preset banks and the 16 buttons to select any of the 64 presets. Tap the preset buttons the number of times you want each sequence to be played and the order in which the song should play them. Once you've finished tapping in your song, release the song button and press start. If you want to display your song on the OLED display to edit, save, or build an entirely new sequence, hold the shift button and press song. Along the top of the screen, you'll see the name of your song and which of the 32 available song slots it's stored in. Below that, you'll see four columns of data with the details of your song. Press the menu and back knobs to move right or left through the columns. Use the first column and turning the menu knob to navigate through all the stages of your song. The second column displays which sequence will be played at the stage of your song. Turn the menu knob to edit that stage's sequence. The third column indicates how many times the selected sequence will be repeated at that stage of the song before advancing to the next song stage. If you push the menu knob again, and move to the right of the third column, you can now choose to either add a new stage below the current or to delete the current stage by turning the menu knob and pressing it once the desired action is visible. You can addition your song while editing it by pressing the start button. Once you are happy with your song, you can give it a name and save it by holding save and pressing the song button again. Again, use the tempo and menu knobs to navigate and edit the options on the display. Here, Start by giving your song a name, then select which of the 32 available slots you want to save your song to. Finally, save your song by highlighting save and pressing the menu knob. To later recall any of your saved songs, hold recall and press song. Turn and then push the menu to select a song, and last but not least, press start to begin playback. Conclusion. This concludes the video manual for Maleko's Panther. I hope you found this video helpful. I'd like to give a special thanks to Ben Davis and the rest of the Maleko team for all their help and guidance while putting this video together. If I missed anything, or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to use the comments section below. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, or head over to my YouTube channel to check out more of my videos.